You can already get max rank items relatively early on in Dying Light 2 if you know where to look. Like here we are level 3 with a level 9 weapon killing every enemy in one hit. It's really insane and maybe they will change this because this farm is intended as an end game activity. But you can now already access it the moment you got to the city center. So do it before they maybe change it, before it's too late. And we can also apply that to, to other things that are not accessible anymore after finishing the main story so we'll touch on those as well let's start with the insane farm you again can already do after reaching the second part of the map the city center just put a marker here and then run in a straight line so you're actually able to get there because there's also another area close by which is contaminated early on so just run there is a metro station nearby which can grab so you're also able to travel to this location faster for the next time you go here once you get to the farm spot for the first time you want to activate the night runner hideout so that when you die you spawn here and next to that you already find the first airdrop which is underwater a good thing to keep in mind is that a lockpick is required to open these boxes and that they are very hard to open so having upgraded lockpicks is really smart so they break less often and upgrading your stamina of course helps so you can stay underwater for longer. Although again, this was on level 3 with some lockpick upgrades. So it's totally possible early on and they get level 9, 8 or 7 gear and weapons. You can also find Morphine which can sell for 600 old world money at a fender. Again, this is really some end game stuff but you can already do it at level 3. So there are 3 of these airdrops near the road. You can easily spot them with your binoculars and there are more of these airdrops close by that you can all try and grab this is the full map of all the airdrops and it seems that horizon village is dropping level 9 gear with then lower level loot in the other airdrops on the map and the best part is that you only have to lockpick these boxes once. After that, they stay open so they can just swim to them and grab the loot. And they reset after some in-game time. So you can just pause the game and wait it, for example, the Night Runner hideout. And then check back half an hour or an hour later and see that the loot has returned. If you somehow got 500 stamina and are able to activate radio towers, which of course is possible after the broadcast main mission, then you can also activate the radio tower in this area see the inhibitor containers although you can of course already grab them if you just look for them so i would say totally check this area the moment you get to the city center and get some of the best loot in the game even if you are still a low level important to know is that this area can change after finishing the main story without spoiling of course you can unflood a part of the city. This was actually already shown at E3 2019. And if you choose to do this, then the region I just talked about will not be underwater anymore, but instead full of infected with boss type infected actually guarding these airdrops. And there is actually a new type of infected here as well. So if you haven't opened the boxes yet, then sure you need to kill the infected. But if you already opened the boxes before, then you can just skip them and grab the loot that way. But if the area is of course still Still underwater then you have to fight no infected making it really doable early on so important info but in short if you haven't finished the main story yet you can just swim to get the same loot and i hope you're not done with the main quest yet because they can pick up two very unique items that seem unobtainable after finishing the final mission of course if you like the video so far then leaving a like on it would really help me out and subscribe for way more dying like content like this one character you can meet before finishing the main story is called the liquidator and he gives you the cyber hands with the description saying that we've seen these somewhere of course that somewhere is cyberpunk 2077 as the mantis blades so yeah you can use these weapons in dying light 2 as well but it seems that it's only obtainable if you haven't finished the main story yet although totally let me know if you found him after beating the main quest but it actually makes sense as well because he asks how your search is going he mentioned that he is filled with hope about how the story will end. And he also talks about choices we can make. It seems weird to kind of say that if you've already finished the main quest. Although I of course hope that everyone can get these cyber hands. But right now it only seems for people who haven't finished the main quest. So then after the broadcast main story mission where you also get the grappling hook. You want to return to that tallest building in the city over here on the map. Take the elevator from the main entrance or from the safe house. Takes a while to get there, but once you got to the top, 
you want to head to the airdrop location by standing on the orange generator outside of the GRE trailer. Use the glider to get to the rooftop and from there we want to climb on top of this generator and then go to the building we see right there. This way we'll find the liquidator and after talking to him you get the Cyberhands blueprint. Again, I hope you can also get this after beating the main story, but right now, again, that doesn't seem to be the case. It cost 369, nice, scrap to make the blades, so as said before in many videos, make sure you buy these resources, including scrap, at every vendor you come across. It's totally quite expensive, although I would argue that these weapons are pretty powerful too. Sure, it's only a rank 4 weapon, but every hit shocks enemies and can even shock multiple targets if they stand close to each other. And sometimes at military convoys this shock can also trigger fire. So you have a lot of enemies burning with just one hit. My tactic right now is just to stab the enemy with this weapon and then switch to another weapon to deal some easy damage as you got a very nice opening. It also works surprisingly well during GRE anomaly boss fights if you like to take them out with melee weapons. With this you namely stun the boss before it can get away and can then get some nice hits in. So really use it as that support weapon because it can break fast if you use it regularly and know that charm I showed you in my previous video that can fix all regular weapons doesn't work here sadly. And by the way after finishing that previous video I tried to get the charm before ending the story and that's also possible so after the broadcast mission go again to the tallest building to that airdrop I talked about earlier and then go down to the developer room and one thing I forgot to mention, only press the glider button once, otherwise you will drop the cable. If you want to know more about that amazing charm that makes your weapons unbreakable, I will link to that video at the end of this one. Now onto the final item you want to get before finishing the main story, because otherwise it's not possible anymore it seems. You already saw them in action, I'm talking about the Lazarus. The brass knuckles from Commander Lucas we of course find early on in the game and then give back to Aider. Well they can be yours from a side mission but only it seems if you during the A Place to Call Home main mission tell Jack what actually happened to Aider so don't lie to him and then you will see him getting carried inside the big PK base during the onboard main mission. Then after getting the side quest you want to complete it before the end of the game Power picks even notes before the broadcast main mission. So just when you see the side mission, you want to do it. Here we'll see his critical condition and have to meet a so-called witch to help him get to the marker for her on the map. And once you get there, you will need to find special herbs during night in a marked location. After getting all three, you have to return to the PK base to give them to Aether. First you make a choice that doesn't really matter, but the next one is really crucial. This will namely mean life or death for Aether and we want to keep him alive. So give the small pedals and you will see that he recovers a bit already. Now after that broadcast mission I talked about earlier, you want to find him in the fish eye canteen. Just chilling there with his son and after this conversation he gives you the knuckles. And they are pretty good, increasing the stats with the power attack. So when you charge up your attack after unlocking that skill, which can by the way hit multiple enemies, you also get a damage buff during day and when full health. Like it's a fun weapon to use, just nice to have if you are a collector, while of course the rank 9 weapons I talked about earlier are way better, but yeah. This is missable if you don't do it before the end of the game. And thanks to MG and Nick Gamble by the way for noting the sunken airdrop farm in the comments under a recent video. Of course if you got cool things let me know in the comments or reach out via the input at Draptor.com email address. Subscribe for way more Dying Light 2 content, a like on the video would really help me out and check out our previous video on that amazing charm and how you can get it and some other secret items. For now I will speak to you in the next one, goodbye.